Good evening. The doors of St. Alfred Parish are open wide to welcome each and every one with a special acknowledgement to all who are visiting our parish community. During this prayerful time together, may we encounter Jesus and experience the joy of his presence. Please print names clearly on your All Souls envelopes. The parish will pray for your deceived loved ones at all masses in November. If the names are illegible, your loved ones will still be remembered at Mass. However, their names will not appear in the Book of Remembrance. Offertory envelopes for the year 2025 are now available. They are arranged in alphabetical order at the side of the church. If you have not been an envelope user and would like to be one, you can call or come into the church office Monday to Friday 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Please note that some parishioners have been assigned new envelope numbers, so it is very important that you do not use your old envelopes in the new year. The Niagara Peninsula Foundation for Children presents its annual trivia night on Saturday, November 23rd at Grantham Optimist Club, 188 Linwell Road in St. Catharines. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. The buffet dinner starts at 6 p.m. Trivia starts at 7 p.m. It will be the 80s and Christmas theme trivia with News Talk 610, Jason Agu. The tickets are only $30 per person and benefits go to St. Vincent de Paul Summer Kids Camp. Come out and have fun to help support the Niagara Peninsula Foundation for Children and St. Vincent de Paul Summer Kids Camp. The new missile 
is now available in the religious goods store or at the church office. They are $5 each. Today is the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. As the liturgical year draws to an end, the church uses the scriptures to turn the hearts and minds of her people to the life to come. How will we know when the end is coming? We do not know the day or the hour, but we know that in God's own time, when light shines and triumphs over darkness, and when justice and love rules over all, then time as we know it will no longer matter, and God's second coming will be upon us. Before we begin our celebration of the Mass, we'd like everyone to warmly greet those around them. And tonight our celebrant is Monsignor Hugh. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Good evening, everyone. My brothers and sisters in Christ, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first of all pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who was found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O oh God. and calm. It is you yourself who are my prize. I keep you, Lord, ever in my sight. Since you are at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Keep me safe, O oh God. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved no decay. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. 
where there is forgiveness of sin and lawless deeds, there is no longer any offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus spoke to his disciples about the end which is to come. In those days, after the time of suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree you learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I sometimes smile when I read this gospel at this time of year. During the past year, we have been presented with many aspects of the gospel. As we come close to the end of the church year, it seems that an element of fear is being introduced at this late stage. A darkened sun, a blank moon, crashing stars, planetary collapse, and Jesus' fearful return on the clouds. It seems to suggest if what went before didn't work, maybe a little fright might. Not quite. This passage in Mark belongs to a style of literature called apocalyptic the best known example of which is the book of Revelation. Apocalyptic literature was the product of a time of persecution and mental anguish, attempting to restore the belief that God was still in charge of the world and that there was always reason to hope. This struggle between a cosmic doomsday and the imminent return of Christ to rapture the good and nuke the bad is a variation of the age-old battle between good and evil, light and darkness. It is echoed in the stories 
Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, Simba and Uncle Scar, Christ and the Antichrist, where the underdog is ultimately triumphant. Apocalyptic literature tells us that someday things will be reversed, the just will be rewarded, and the unjust will be punished. Mary sang of this very same theme in her Magnificat. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. And of course, Jesus warned, but woe to you who are rich now, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will weep and mourn. End of the world themes are as old as ancient Jewish and Greek literature. They are embedded in the New Testament from Jesus to St. Paul and are indeed enshrined in our liturgy. After all, today and in every Sunday, we all unthinkingly recite our creed which says, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And our acclamation after the consecration cries out, We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And after the Our Father, I will say, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The second coming of Christ was very definitely included in the good news. His coming again is a promise and not a threat. When Jesus came the first time, many missed the opportunity. John the Baptist made an all-out attempt to prepare them, but many of them didn't want to know. Jesus warns us to be ready for his next coming, to stay awake, to watch, to pray. For the Christian, the coming of Christ cannot come too soon. It's interesting that the last words of the Bible are a prayer, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. When will he come? Only God knows. Nevertheless, apocalyptic literature has spawned many predictions about the end of the world from the writings of the early fathers to the so-called prophecies of St. Malachi in the 12th century to Nostradamus in the 16th century, to Archbishop James Usher, who predicted that the end of the world would occur in 1996, to the Jehovah's Witnesses, who predicted the end with great regularity until they threw in the towel in 1994, to David Koresh and his end of the world sect, who perished in that Waco tragedy of 1993, and there are many, many more. But behind all of these traditions or predictions, and in some cases, fanaticism, there lies a truth that we desperately need to be reminded of and cling to. The truth is, God is in charge, not us. We need to hear that because we, with our portfolios and insurance plans, our platinum credit cards and bonuses, our frequent flyer miles and second houses, generate a certain pride that we are insulated from life's tragedies. We entertain the fantasy that we are in charge of our own destiny. Yet all of this self-made satisfaction plummets into insignificance 
when we leave the doctor's office stunned with the news that we have breast or prostate cancer, when we learn our marriage has grown cold and that our spouse wants a divorce, when we find out that one of our children is on drugs, when death has snatched away a husband or wife, when we have been downsized, and when all the things that we strive to accumulate become empty and boring, or when a pandemic hits and we realize how vulnerable we all really are. The apocalyptic strain rightly says to all of this, God is in charge of all times and all seasons and lives. God will have the last word. Yes, God is in charge. Not us is the apocalyptic truism. God will make all things new again. God will lift up the lowly, free the captives, and turn your life upside down for the better. Go ahead and live your lives. Just don't hug the illusion that you are in charge. Live piously, justly, and in the awesomeness of God. Do your best to be humble enough and give glory to God. Be open to the Spirit. Even learn to embrace your cross, knowing that God can bring glory out of all the tragedy that can break our hearts, for God is sovereign. There is a plan. We're all going somewhere. Justice will triumph. Life has ultimate meaning. Even though we are a speck in this endless cosmos, we are special. We are privileged, beloved sons and daughters awaiting redemption and the fullness of love. Timetables belong to God. With a little help from us, God will make all things new again. For us, the only time is now. I am called to live my life and leave everything else to God. He knows what he's doing. He knows what's happening. All he asks of us is that we get on in living. The task of each one of us is to open our hearts so that Jesus can take up residence there. And if Jesus is living within our hearts, then I need not fear his second coming. As far as I will be concerned, he's already here, deep within my heart. Let us stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The resurrection of the body. Let us pray for the needs of the Church, of this gathered community, and for our world. The response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, for never failing awareness that we will one day be called to account for what we have done and what we have failed to do. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders and citizens, for the ability to listen to one another with genuine humility, 
to reach across the divisions in our midst and build consensus to promote the common good. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For grace poured out and received among us to stand with the poor, the immigrant, the vulnerable, and the prisoner, and to lead the many to justice. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. During our busy lives, for grace to step beyond the duty of routine and the frenzy of busyness, to cherish the many gifts that are ours, to be mindful of gratitude as a way of life. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick, especially the parishioners who have asked for our prayers. We ask the Lord Jesus to lay his healing hands upon them and assure them of his abiding presence at this difficult time. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Maria Tota, and for their families and friends who grieve them with love. And at this Mass, we remember all souls. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you show us the path of life. Help us daily to Jews to bring light to the darkness and hope. May compassion define us and love guide us as we await that day and hour when time will no longer matter and all will be transformed in your eternal grace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. i 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we, offer, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially those in our Book of Remembrance. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Alfred and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
for those attending Mass online, the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
I invite the minister bringing communion to the sick to please come forward. Heavenly Father, we pray you bless this Eucharistic minister as she brings the blessed sacrament to our sick and homebound parishioner. May the person who receives the Eucharist from the sacred altar know that we are with them in spirit and in prayer, and we bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, my name is Leona Dempsey and I'm the president of the Catholic Women's League. I would like to thank St. Alfred's community for your donations of baked goods. We netted over $1,200, the, the biggest in a long time. And the White Elephant Room, where it was the yard sale things, made over $1,100. So we did very well. Thanks to everyone who donated gifts for the penny sale and to, to, to the Price is Right. It was the effort of three communities, the English, the Spanish, and the Italian communities working together to make it such a success, which I'm very proud to say. So thank you. Also, I would like to thank my CWL members who worked hours behind the scenes planning and setting up, canvassing for gifts, picking up gifts, then cleaning up, and Lorraine in the office for taking care of the penny sale items. It's a lot of work, but we were very pleased with the results. Thank you. I'd like to also mention Deacon Frank and Rick, the two men on our team who are not CWL members. And last of all, I would like to thank Jesus because he was there with us. So thank you. We are a wonderful, wonderful community here. So keep, keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. you